It's Rodney Allen Rippey, and we're here at the Boys and Girls Club in Virginia. And wow, I can't believe it. We've had so many great interviews, and we are here at Fair, Fairfield Court. And I'm telling you, I'm just really blown away at the great turnout. There's a guy right here at the next table, and he's doing light refraction. That's pretty interesting for young people to understand how light can refract. Pretty cool, interesting scientific stuff going on. But we are here with two wonderful guests, and if you would, please give me your name. What's your name? Sarah Ellison. Sarah Ellison, and your name? Krista Ellison. This is my mom. Krista and her mom. It's so wonderful. So how, how is it? What would you say, ma'am? You're here. You see the Boys and Girls Club. What do you think this is doing for the young people? I think it's a great community to help the young people because um, it is very needed in our community. One thing is that fighting crime, and it starts at a young age, knowing what to, com what to expect in the community, how the community um, can connect with the young people so they know how to uh, what the, what the police department is all about, what prison life is all about, what everything that goes in the community, in their community, they need to be educated on how to handle things that goes on in their community. Well, you know what, and yes, the Boys and Girls Club, they have built up a great reputation for being a safe haven for many young men and young ladies. And you know, sometimes you just need a, a good place to go, a good place to go and talk to someone. And you know, stay out of trouble. You know, when everybody else is out doing something crazy, you could be inside the Boys and Girls Club learning something and learning a pathway. Krista, is it true you're with a really great organization? Talk to me about it. FOE is an organization that was established by three incarcerated men. These men are still behind the walls, and they have put together workshops to prepare the men on the outside and women on the out. I mean, on the inside. Um, for parole, so when they come home that they'll be able to get locked into the things that we have going on out there, um, out here. So um, they have educational courses, they have financial literacy courses, they have um, different workshops that they have put together that will prepare them for society. Right, right. Chrissy, you know, you know, anybody can make a can make a, a, a bad choice, a bad decision. You work hand in hand with these guys and, and women, of course. And what can you say? What is the target age that you really, really need to be getting at young people to kind of make sure that they're on the right path? What age is it? I would say it starts at the age of 14. 15 years old because some young men then think that they are grown already they have already got their body have already gone through that changes and their testosterone is is full and with the and some as young as nine years old because I mean the young the you know we tell them a fairy tale story that there's Christmas, there's Santa Claus, that there's an Easter Bunny, and, uh, and then when their mind gets more mature and they realize that those things aren't true, they start exploring on their own and figuring out things on their own. So I think as as young as nine years old is when we should start, you know, making sure we get a hand handle on the care and the truth because the nasty truth of, of, of what the world is when they step outside that house right. from the fairy tale that we have fed them is a, a total different world that they're faced with and not all the time are they with mom and dad right. to protect them or shield them from the truth wow i mean that's that's really deep um you know you think about these things and, and you think about it what do you say is I mean, I understand there's there's a lot of things within a community that could that could be a cause, you know, as we know, many, many. And this is just this isn't just um, communities of diversity. These are all communities. But parents are having to work. They have to get out. They got to take I mean, the expenses of living and just taking care of things. Oftentimes, parents are really busy because they are trying to. Uh, take care of things. Do, would you say that 
What do you think is a, are some of the key triggers? Is it movies? Is it music? What is it? A, is it a mindset? What is it that you can see the difference between some young people who seem to be more focused? What is the thing that you would recommend or what would you say is a trigger that, that could, could take a kid off the right course? Um, I think that in their minds that they think that there is a such thing as the Joneses, keeping up with the Joneses. They have to realize that the Joneses is really broke trying to live that lifestyle. And Joneses, if you can show me the Joneses <laughs> and their model that they have followed to make their success, then, I, then we all should be living that. But the Joneses does not exist. And that's what the kids need to know. Peer pressure, you know, you can look at T.I. the rapper. He has a wife and kids, and he has to send them to college. So he has to work, and he works hard, yeah. and he makes his children work. Yeah. But all we see is him throwing up the gang signs. All we see is him talking about guns, rapping about the street that he does not live. He lives in a mansion. He lives in a house that he paid good money for. So the, what he's rapping about is not what he's living today. He's le rapping about how he made it past that struggle by making the right decision on putting in the hard work. You know, I mean, I, I listen to all kinds of music, but I trust me, I try to cut back on stuff that, that I just like the old school. You know, I like real music, real artists, real musicians, real, real instruments, you know, but you know that it's very interesting that you say that and a lot of times you know there has to be some type of accountability you know but you know that's why young people should say they should make their mind up to be on a, a right path and to live out their dreams and not follow any artists or anybody else now and you also you know i hear a lot of times some actors or music people or athletes they say i'm not a role model what do you what do you have to say about that they're telling you and you know a lot of times we don't take people for face value if they tell you who they are and they and they showing you who they are you should take them for their word uh when they say they're not role models they're telling you listen i might say one thing but i'm doing another and they might say they're carrying guns and they might say that they're about that life and they're keeping it 100 but no they are not they're telling you that they're not they're telling you, don't look at me. You know how our parents used to say, uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. It's kind of that model. You don't want to ever put aside your own dreams, you know, and your own gifts and talents to try to mimic someone else's gifts and talents because what works for them work for them and you don't know what they had to sell or steal or borrow to get to where they are. So you have to set your own path and stand firm in what you believe in. If it's quirky, if it's awkward, if it's corny to someone else, it might be a treasure to you. So, you know, freedom over everything, that's a beautiful thing, man. There's nothing like freedom. It's nothing like being able to be your own man or your own woman. And, and that's why I take my freedom. It's a precious thing. Life may not be what you want it to be. You might not have everything going the way you want to to have it at times but at least you're free and you know and it's sad to see any man or any woman incarcerated but you know they have to pay and adjust for things and sadly bad choices sometimes but what can you say about those men and women who do come home and they get a second chance isn't it a beautiful thing Second chances is most definitely second, third, and fourth chances because I always say I don't have a heaven or hell to put no one in, right? We all make mistakes and learn, and a lot of times we are a product of our environment. So, you know, the Bible says when I was a child, I thought of a child, and when I became a man, I put away my childish things. That holds true for these men because a lot of these men were locked up, has been locked up for 20 years in their teenage years. Um, I have a best friend. He's been he was gone since the age of 14. He's just making it home at the age of 40, 41 years old. He's done 26 years of prison, um, and now he's an engineer. 
He studied. He went back to school to get his own, you know, license to be an engineer. He soon want to open up his own business as, um, you know, being um, doing engineer work. So, I say to those who men who have already at 14, 15 committed these crimes and now at because they were misled, misguided, right. and under peer pressure. Now that they are grown and they have grown past that stage and they have corrected their own behavior, mm -hmm. I, I say, yeah, why not give them a second chance? Because who doesn't deserve a, um, the opportunity to live to their fullest potential? And give, us, and give everybody out there a little shout out. How can people support freedom over everything? Votes. Voting is uh, very important in our community. We have to vote. Um, two, you know, we have an online petition, change.org, to bring parole, to reinstate parole in the state of Virginia. Parole has been gone since 95 in the state of Virginia, and we're trying to get it back in its entirety. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Krista. Freedom over everything. Make sure you check them out. Make sure you support them. Can you take donations? We do take donations. So our website is www.freedomovereverything.org. There you go. Freedomovereverything.org. Well, thank you, Krista. Okay. God bless okay. you. Thank okay. you for coming and coming out. And again, you just seen another great interview here from the Boys and Girls Club here in Fairfield Courts in beautiful Richmond, Virginia.